Hello everyone, so today I'm back with another very informative video which uh, you guys have been requesting me for now a very long time. So this is about the whole interview process of the PhD or postdoc or a bachelor or master thesis position. So the points that I'm going to talk about will be mostly applicable for a PhD or a postdoc interviews. So let's get started. So usually uh, the interview happens, uh, the whole interview process uh, takes place in rounds. Um, and in most cases, there are two rounds, but in some cases there are, could also be three rounds of interview. Um, so basically this interview process starts with a brief introduction about yourself. The interviewer, or in this case, the professor is going to ask you to introduce yourself. Now this uh, should be brief, not more than one minute or two minutes at most. And in this, don't go into too much philosophical angle and don't start explaining from your 10th or 12th standard uh, education and studies and all that. Just explain uh, like where are you from and like uh, what work you are doing, what is your experience, what is your area of interest and so on. <clears throat> then um, this is the most important part so this is where they will uh, you will you will get a chance to show uh, them your work that you have done uh, in your field uh, either it's from your bachelor's th thesis so basically if you are applying for a master thesis position they will uh, you should prepare a presentation of your bachelor thesis work if you are applying for uh, a P uh, phd position then you should uh, prepare a presentation about your master thesis work and so on. If you're applying for a postdoc position, then you should prepare a presentation about your PhD thesis work. Um, so this, uh, th this presentation, um, don't make it too long. Uh, cover the overall concept of the topic, what problem you were trying to address and how, what methods did you use to solve that problem. So followed by this, your presentation, they are going to ask you uh, questions related to, wait a second, let me use the laser. Okay. So followed by your presentation, the interviewers might ask you some questions uh, from your presentation. So uh, you should be ready. And uh, followed by this, um, they might go into a so, uh, so small discussion about the literature and the current research ideas revolving around the overall topic and uh, they will try to also ask questions from the research area about your masters or whatever you presented in your presentation so uh, you, you must have some kind of an uh, a big picture idea what your research uh, uh, area is and what are the latest things that are going in in your research area but keep in mind you don't need to prepare everything but keep in mind the topic of the phd or the whatever position you are applying mostly their questions will revolve around that topic only so you don't need to digress a lot um, followed by this you will have a pers personal conversation with your um, the the professor or your supervisor or the whole committee members um, about yeah these are not really research related questions these are more like general questions uh, like how do you how would you um, uh, what is your future uh, uh, endeavors like what do you want to achieve and uh, uh, possibly about what kind of uh, so the duration of the project and about the financials uh, so about the funding and like more mostly like bureaucratic and administrative uh, talks uh, then you will get also a chance to ask questions uh, from the committee member but don't uh, go into too much depth if you have some questions uh, related to the position or some funding or uh, like any general question that you think that it's it's important and they will be able to answer best 
so prepare some questions in uh, like beforehand uh, maybe some research questions as well and uh, don't ask maybe two or three questions like two or three questions is the max but don't go beyond that uh, because they have a certain time limit for each candidate and uh, they would have to stop you at some point so um, yeah so these this is the overall process now uh, usually in in most places there will be two rounds uh, so first round in in the first round this is about uh, they will have a common discussion with you and maybe in the second round more detailed uh, uh, you will have to demonstrate your knowledge and uh, what what um, how much do you know about the methods uh, in in your field in in the final round and then they will decide uh okay so now i'll i'll explain uh, the like my own interview process that happened so this is a screenshot of uh, my uh, from my uh, professor um, about the agenda that they decided for my interview process uh, this was the same for all the applicants that were invited for the interview and this is the second round uh, actually in the first round we uh, generally had a discussion like one-on-one uh, -on -one discussion with uh, with my supervisor uh, about uh, the position and my research interest and so on and uh, in the second round it's more with uh, a full-on committee members like there are two to three people at least um in the panel uh, that will take your interview so you can see that we uh, he was asking about the time and stuff so these are the main four points uh, that we went through so first i have to i had to give a brief presentation about uh, myself and one of my projects so in this i uh, uh, presented my master thesis so you can also see that they have allotted a time for each section of the interview um, so you can see that 10 minutes I, I was given 10 minutes for to present my uh, one of my projects and then followed by five minutes of discussion then discussion of current literature now this uh, it's, it's allotted 15 minutes now this is not uh, like very standard I, I never saw any other interview with this part so this was quite detailed for me so for this second part um, uh, I was given three overall topics and in these three topics I was given uh, two research papers these are mostly review articles quite recent review articles to go through so basically I had to select one topic and go through all the two papers that were given in that topic and this was quite huge papers like these will be mostly uh, not like small papers these are mostly uh, nature or cell or science papers so uh, I was asked to uh, so I, I had to select one topic and then I had to go through the papers mostly the the picture the pictorial representations the introduction the abstract the discussion and conclusion so basically I had to understand what the work is about and uh, how the how the the methodology part mostly then um, third part was about uh, a solving a programming problem so they gave me a, a, a problem so it's not like I had to write the code or anything I just had to give them an uh, a pseudo code like an algorithm how you how I would solve that problem um, but it was a programming related problem because I my position is bioinformatics and computational biology related so programming is uh, a major skill um, required so uh, this was more like a skill test and then last part was personal conversation where it was mostly like administrative stuff and you don't need really any preparation for this it's mostly their part they're going to inform you uh, about all the administrative processes and what you have to do and uh, what are the time limitations and so on and lastly you would be able to you would give so at the end you would be given a chance to ask questions 
uh, as you can see that uh, this agenda is the same for all invited applicants so uh, always keep in mind while this whole discussion is happening do not digress too much from the main topic of interest and because that will just spoil your time in which you can present yourself in more effective ways um yeah so basically the these are the overall four points that that in that happened in my interview um okay so this might be different according to your uh, application procedure but i would say that this is one of the most uh, uh detailed processes that uh, that would be there because in this whole process they are basically checking if you are familiar with the scientific concepts and methods and if completely not then if you have the capability that you can acquire those skills and knowledge in a very short period of time so this is a very important point to keep in mind so don't get uh too much stressed that you don't know a lot about your topic or something um if you can present yourself in a way that you you show that you can adapt to the situation and you know that uh, that that you're showing that you can learn also quickly you're a quick learner uh, that will also work so this is pretty much i think 1 to 1 and 1/2 hour uh, at most um and uh, in in other in, in maybe you you would not have to solve a programming problem because if you are an experimental uh, person dealing with wet lab then you might be asked some method method question like microscopy or or you know these pcr related questions um, or like wet lab questions basically summing it up some points to keep in mind during this whole process uh do not go into too much philosophy or hypothetical discussions because that just wastes your time and does that does not tell anything about you about you to the uh, interview it it does not convey any useful information basically so avoid uh, going into too much hypothetical uh, discussions for example in one of my first interviews this is my fourth this was my fourth interview i think in one of my first interviews uh, they asked me to introduce myself and uh, why i am interested in this topic and i went into a very philosophical uh, angle and that actually backfired so i went into like how this field inspired me and so on so small experiences happened and like uh, Uh, this this coding area really inspired me and so on that that just does not tell anything so just avoid going to too much philosophy um uh, and state with the facts and research ideas only that way you would be able to show your knowledge and also um you would stay on the point and avoid digressing now this is a very important point do not oversell yourself um uh, and and uh, show that you can do everything okay? this is one of the most common mistakes that many candidates do in their interview so basically what i mean by this that some panelist in the interview might ask you that if you are able to do this method if you are familiar with this method or if you are giving a given a job or task during your uh, phd project will you be able to do that and if you have no experience in that particular area and still you are saying that uh, yeah i will be able to do it you might be able to do it but if you are not too confident or you have not done it so don't overclaim uh, the tasks uh, that you can do so that would ultimately put you in trouble because once you reach there you have to finish your phd project in a certain period of time you do not have your lifetime to do to work on the single project and if you are taking on tasks that are not re really related to your phd project but just to explore more you know and that would really take off take, like take away the time that you should be investing in your project to get your phd thesis done 
and you would be putting your work and your efforts into other things which are really not um, going to give you uh, your PhD thesis. So basically don't over claim, don't oversell yourself and um, um, if, if, you are, if you do not know something then just say yeah, I, I do not know. So this is the next point actually. Um, do not go blindly guessing some questions that would give a bad impression. If you want to guess something, uh, ask for it that uh, if it's okay that I, 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 try th I try it or make it sure that you are not sure about it. But you think that it's supposed to be like this or you, you guess it's something like this. But your guess or whatever you are saying, it should be on some logic. Okay, because they might counter ask that why do you think it, this method works like this. Then if you did not had any logic in your primary answer, that would put you in a bad spot. Um, next, a very important point. I have mentioned this before also. Always speak, keeping the topic at the, in, the, in mind. Do not digress from the topic because all they want to know that you will be able to work on the particular topic, on the proposed topic of the, of the thesis of the project. And finally, stay calm and confident. If you are, if you do not know something, just be honest. Don't panic. If you panic, you won't, would not be able to think clearly and the answers which you know, you will mess it up. So don't do that. Stay calm and confident. And uh, that's all for this video. So I covered the most important points keeping in mind my own interview experiences and uh, from what interviews I have seen. Uh, I have also uh, been in interview panels for master students and some PhD students. So I can tell you from my own experience that it's not a very difficult process. If you have already been invited to an interview, you have a very good chance. So don't think that you are, you do not have sufficient knowledge you never will that's the fact and just try to present yourself in a way that conveys the idea to the interviewers that you are fit for the current project keep in mind the topic of interest and the topic which the project is about and uh, uh, keep your discussion within that topic that's all for this video. I hope it is uh, helped and uh, please hit the like button if you liked my videos. Uh, I thank to all my subscribers and uh, if you have further questions, please mention them in the comment section. I respond to all your comments. I read all of them and uh, that's all. Uh, see you in the next video. Bye.